Shiny day. We had some um, rain this week. Is there any announcements we need to make? Yes, Jenny. Um, I'm going to pass around the kids' church sign in. Uh, kids' church sign in. Any and all volunteers is appreciated very much. Okay, I have some announcements. Um, the Econet meeting, September 6th, that will be Tuesday, and also the trustees meeting. I'm sorry? <laughs> He's the instigator, isn't he? <laughs> okay, I'll repeat that. The Econet meeting and the trustees meeting, September 6th, which is Tuesday at 6.30. Prayer meeting, Wednesday the 7th, and the 14th is also a prayer meeting. <coughs> Men's breakfast is Saturday, September 17th, and September 24th is the Women's Fall event, Pumpkin Spice and Jesus. That would be from 8.30 to 12. And September 25th is the church meeting coming up. If, if, um... Had. Just a minute, Maggie's got some. Um, if you did not receive a proposal last Sunday at the picnic, please see. Um, let's see, who can I put in charge I ask, please see me right after church so you can see the proposal and the information for the meeting on the 25th. And you can have it and read over it and think about it and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So if you did receive a proposal, Scott, see Scott right after church. He will have the uh, the up today. See? <laughs> okay. Any other news or whatever we have to uh, announce first? My call to worship today will be Second Thessalonians three, verses one through five. Pray for us. Finally, brethren, pray for us. The word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is in you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful, who will, be, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Let us pray. O gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, thanking you so much for what you have given us, a beautiful day. Lord, you provide with us the love that we need. And Lord, the love and compassion, the forgiveness, the guidance, it is in your word every day. Lord, may we open our hearts and our minds to this. Lord, you give us everything we need if we are patient to wait for it. May your glory and 
everything else that we need. We need to look for you for this. And we thank you so much for your son. He died for us and gave us the spirit that lives in us each day. Thank you, Lord. We ask for your blessings on this message that Pastor Andy gives us today. In Jesus' name, amen. you and it does its own thing and it's moody. So, who can remember, my goodness gracious, what we've been learning about? Who knows what we've been learning about? Trust Jesus, Liam. What? Steve? Cam? Cam came to visit us? Yeah? He's right. Cam came to visit us. Cam brought us treasures last week, didn't he? But we've been learning that Jesus gives us power to do all sorts of things, right? And that we can trust Jesus. So that we can do all of these things. Jesus gives us power to, you ready? Do hard things. Trust Jesus. Jesus gives us power, or Jesus' power gives us power. Hope. Trust Jesus. Oh, come on. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Jesus' power. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Does anybody remember how we do that? How do we live forever? Trust. You're right. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. We ask Jesus to be our Savior, right? We trust Jesus. Now, Jesus' power helps us to be good friends. How many of you have a good friend? How many of you have 
a so-so friend. How many of you have a friend that only is your friend when they want something? <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that with brothers and sisters, right? <laughs> I don't want to be your friend until you have the Lego set that I want, and now I want to be your friend. Yeah? Does that happen? Does that happen? But Jesus' power helps us to be a good friend. We have lots of people here who are starting a new year, right? For a lot of our families, the new year starts September 1st, not January 1st. Is that, like, that's how the calendar works in my house. September 1st is like, woohoo, new year, school starts, right? All of those things. And lots of people are like that. You have an opportunity to be Jesus to your friends. Now, Jeremy, Jeremy, come on up here. I have this fancy bag. Who knows what's in my fancy bag? Candy. 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 You're right. Now, I know that Jeremy likes M&Ms. I like the M&Ms. Which M&Ms do you think are Jeremy's favorite? The yellow kind. The yellow kind, right? <laughs> Who else likes the yellow kind? I can tell you that. Who else likes the yellow kind? Yeah. Well, Jeremy, here, you can have those ones, because I like the yellow kind better. I like the red kind. You like the red kind? <laughs> See? Now, am I being a good friend to Jeremy? No. I gave him M&M's. I shared with him. Am I his good friend? So-so. So-so friend, right? <laughs> hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Have a great day, right? But I think that I like... Where'd it go? You know what? I like yeah, Jen. Jen likes Reese's Cups. Oh, look at all the Reese's Cups in here. Oh, I have a Snickers bar. Whose favorite is a Snickers bar? That's not Snickers. Oh, that's all the Now, does it mean that I have to 
say, Jen, you better love Jesus because he loves you. Does that mean that I'm being a good friend if I do that? Yeah. Not really. Some people it is. Some people it is like that. It's like, you know, God really loves you and you really need to be him. Some people hear like that. But most people hear when I say, okay, I have something in my bag. Would you take some? Most people are going to hear. <laughs> All right, try again. Most people are going to hear if I share. You already got one. If I share, if I share with my actions, if I share with my behavior, if I share with my nice words, would you share these around, please? Thank you. People are going to meet Jesus if I share nicely. If I'm kind, if I'm generous, if I, you'll get some, I promise. I promise it'll be back. People aren't going to want to know your Jesus if you're like, you get saved. People don't want to hear about Jesus if you're mean, do they? Do you want to hear about Jesus if I'm mean to you? No. Do you want to hear about the person I work for if I'm going to be mean to you? No. You don't want to know even if we have the best chocolate ice cream in the world and I'm mean, you don't want to hear about it. We have the very best thing in the entire world. And to be the best friend, we need to share. Just like we're sharing our chocolate. Just like we share our prizes. Just like we share our favorite toys. Sharing Jesus is more important than sharing our favorite toys. But sharing our favorite toys is a way to share Jesus. It's kind of tricky in our brains, isn't it? So, to be a good friend, Jesus gives us power. Now, I'm giving you guys chocolate. I expect a little bit better response from everybody. <laughs> Jesus gives us power to be good friends. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Even if you're nervous and scared and not sure about giving Jesus to other people, trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Next week is a really important week for the bridge, for you, Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to start. Have, you have, these guys need prizes too, Mr. Scott. We're going to start a contest next week. We're going to have some great prizes. We might have some flop prizes. I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot coming up this year as we learn more about Jesus and as we learn to grow and to be more like him. We have a lot to learn. So starting next week, everybody gets packets and papers and bookmarks and prizes and fun things. Okay? So make sure you're here. Bring a friend. Let's share Jesus. Okay? Did Danny get one, Mr. Scott? Okay. Make sure that we share Jesus. Whoa! It's raining. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, let's pray. Ready? <coughs> Sorry. Jesus, we thank you for today, and we thank you that we can trust you. God, that we can trust your power to help us to be good friends. God, to help us to have hope and to help us to be brave. God, you give us power to do hard things. God, we thank you for that. We pray that as we close our summer session of Bridge, that God, you will help us to remember that you are always with us and that you always give us power and that we can always trust you because you care about us so much. We love you, God, and we pray that you'll be with us as we go through our week. Those of us who go back to school this week, God, help us to be brave. As some of us have new classes, maybe new teachers, <coughs> new schedules. God, help us to be brave and to trust you. We love you so much, and we thank you for what you're going to do. God, take good care. 
take good care of our families this week. God of our Second Baptist family, take good care of them. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus gives us power to be good friends. And Maggie gives us the power to be wired for the rest of service, so I don't expect any droopy eyes today. Good morning, everybody. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to remember, of course, all of our friends and family who are traveling this weekend, having fun, and uh, our last official fling for this summer. Can you believe it? Wasn't it just our annual meeting in January, like yesterday? Yeah, um, so yes, pumpkin spice mania strikes. <laughs> anyway, um, of course we want to continue to pray for Belle. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a special shirt this week. Um, and um, I know that they're enjoying themselves. They're out camping. I'm so excited for them to be able to be together, Tim and Belle off somewhere if you're watching. Don't know where you're camping. Don't know what you call camping, but it's good to, it's a, a just remember Belle and her treatments. And um, of course, pray for the Green family. Um, if you didn't know, um, this has already been made public. Uh, uh, Thursday morning, Dave had a stroke um, and um, they, Eventually, he went to Albany, where there was a procedure they were hoping to do, um, but they were unable to do it. Um, so he is home. Um, I would suggest if you need any more information or have any questions or anything like that, please call Pat directly. Um, but I'm not at liberty to give her number out publicly. Okay, so that's going to be up to you. Um, and of course, just remember uh, Dave and Patty. Uh, 47 years, just so you know. 47 years they've been together. Um, and our daughter, Becca, is uh, visiting somebody in North Carolina this weekend. So um, we we'll pray that, uh, I ask you to pray that she has uh, good uncanceled flights on the way back to Massachusetts and good weather and uh, that she has a good time. Uh, breaking into her final semester of college. Yeah. Anyway, I will not. I will not go parentally, you know, sentimental here for a second. We gotta, we gotta keep this thing on the rails. If there were any rails after Maggie passes out chocolate. <laughs> but uh, does anybody else this morning have anything that they would like to uh, ask us to pray for today? I have a testimony. Yes, we can use those. On fr Friday morning, Friday morning, we were um, using big hammers in our backyard, and um, Liam missed the thing he was swinging at, and he swung the, it was a framing hammer, so one of the big hammers, he swung it, and missed, and came up, and hit, hit the corner of his eye with the claw of the hammer. Guys, he missed his eyeball by, like, less than a millimeter, and it was only God, because... <laughs> I thought we were going to the hospital with that hammer stuck in his eyeball. And I'm just thankful that God protected me on that day. He won't do that again. <laughs> but God took care of us. And I was, I just, that's a testimony in our house. Because, you know, accidents happen. And you hear of them all the time. You hear of horrible accidents, right? And it wasn't because he was messing around or doing something he wasn't supposed to do. He just put all of his six-year-old behind it. And he missed what he was after. So... I'm just thankful that Liam still has his eye and he can see and he doesn't have a concussion or a broken nose or anything. Nope. He uh, had a headache for the rest of the day that day, but when he woke up the next morning, no headache, no soreness or anything like that. There was no swelling, excessive swelling or bruising or anything. So his uh, guardian angel was right there. And we appreciate that very much. Anybody else with a word of testimony or... Uh, prayer requests this morning? I'm glad they know. Mm -hmm. The house was sold and the owners are in it. Wow. And we had to swap the 6x12 trailer for a 20 foot truck. 
<laughs> well, yep, that happens. <laughs> oh, I was hoping to take that with us. Well, we should have put it in the truck sooner, right? <laughs> yeah. 15 years. 15 years. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you home home, Miss Dawn. Yes, especially since I drove the diesel tooling all the way back. <laughs> yeah. You grew up with who? I drove the F-350 diesel tooling. Oh. Ah, <laughs> yep, that's what they do. And glad you're safe, glad you're home, home, glad everything went through. Amen. Skip and Dar headed home tomorrow. So Skip, and, Tuesday. Skip and Dar headed home from Florida Tuesday. Thank you for traveling, safety, and again, non cancel. No, they drive anyway. Drive. So good weather, good weather. And they had a major incident when they got down there. Yes. Probably yes. The thing they went down, the snake had gotten yeah. up and messed up their whole AC and heating unit, so <laughs> they had to get that all prepared while they were there too. So. Yeah, they had a, uh, a snake get into their outdoor uh, compressor unit for their AC, <laughs> and um, you and know. This is why we live where the air hurts our face. This is where, why we live where the air hurts our face. <laughs> yes, but everything was okay. The house was okay. They got things repaired and and. Uh, Praise God, he took care of their, of their property. Anyone else this morning? Stephanie. Update on the hand. I fell so hard, I have bruised the bone in like two places. Okay. The good news, the bad news is that I've said, it just takes time. It just needs to heal. <laughs> Stephanie got a good report about her hand, that she just bruised the bone. Um, but uh, then that means there's nothing that they can do except for let it heal. And it's really easy to give it all the rest you need to, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Why you I know. Use it. Yeah, because you have to use it too. So, but thank God for the good report, and we pray for speedy speed recovery. <laughs> yes, yes. At least they um, could have fixed the break. Also, pray for my friend um, Jill. Though. Her husband is in the hospital. He's got COPD very bad, and they're trying to get him to go to work. Okay. Stephanie's friend Jilda, her husband is um, struggling in the hospital with COPD. Amen. Anybody else this morning? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we're so grateful that we have somebody who's alive to pray to. So many other religions pray to statues, they pray to those who are still in their graves, but we know not only are you the living God, as was spoken earlier, but our Savior Jesus Christ rose from the dead after three days of being in the grave, and he is alive forevermore. There's nothing else that will ever take his life from him. And we are thankful, Lord, in spite of the circumstances around us, that we can lift our hands, our hearts, our minds, and our prayer requests to the one true God, to the living God, to Jehovah himself. Because of Christ's work on the cross, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and put these things directly at your feet. And that is what we do today, Lord. Many of these things are very heavy upon us and upon our town. And we ask, Lord God, that as many as can or would find their way to bring these things to you and let you relieve us, not of the emotion, not of the... the, the the thoughts that are in our heads of, of people and situations, but of the burden that these things carry. Hebrews calls, it, calls them the, the sin and the weight that so easily beset us. These things are burdens upon us. We'll wait for just a second. These things can be weights and burdens upon us. But you are strong. 
and you are able. And more than that, you are willing to help us. And so into your hands, Lord God, we give all of these cares. We exalt you for the testimonies that have been given. We exalt you for the testimonies to come. And even as the disciples prayed, Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Sometimes it's just hard. And that mustard seed rolls right underneath the couch. But Lord, today, we give you our hearts. We give you our minds. And we give you the rest of the service that you would have your way. And that your spirit would work in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand up and sing this morning. So as we get into this, we are going to learn a new song today. Uh, often, uh, many of you have heard it on the radio. It's called You're Worthy of My Song. That's our last song this morning. It's a slower song. Um, so we'll be learning it together. It's one of our favorites. But let's stand and sing this morning. I don't know. Am I on, Lucy? Our tech teams are working really hard to make sure that they're on top of everything. Um, and again, we are looking for volunteers to help with our um, sound system and our projector and the streaming equipment. So if you have even, you want to learn it to be a backup, we would greatly appreciate all of your help. Is this on? Is Maggie's microphone on? Can you hear her through the speaker? Do, 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 do. Now I'm on. Okay. Go ahead.
said the keyboard's a little loud. Is it a little loud? Sorry, guys.
this song starts out with the first verse there. I'm going to sing until my heart starts changing. I'm going to worship until I mean every word. Because the way I feel and the fear I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve. song. I pour out your praises in blessing and breaking. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of my song. And that's where we're going to start.
be seated this morning and we're ask that you get your elements ready still remain in the attitude of worship has been presented Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. The symbols of which we hold in our hands today. And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us, as difficult as it is sometimes, what it means to bring a sacrifice of praise to your house. Bring a sacrifice of praise to the Lord this morning. And as ugly and difficult as it was, as horrific as it was, as innocent as you were, we are so grateful to be able to remember the sacrifice that you made for us and to symbolize it and celebrate it by participating in what we call the communion, the Lord's Supper. I consider it part of the fellowship of the brethren. I consider it part of our worship to you way to be obedient because after these things you said as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup you show that you remember until the day you return and we will keep doing that we will keep remembering and so Lord on that night after you washed the disciples feet you passed the bread after you had blessed it. And you said, this was my body. As it was being passed around, it was being torn piece by piece for each man to have one. You said, this is my body, which was broken for you. And Lord, we know that your body was broken for us. know that it was sacrificed for us, the pure and spotless lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And so today, Lord, we remember that sacrifice by partaking together in Jesus' name. also pass the cup what you said is the new testament the new covenant that would be written in your blood which could not have been spilled without your broken body I know that's obvious but what a beautiful thing what an amazing thing to do even for the very people that were going to drive the nails and destroy your earthly body. You said, this is the New Testament in my blood. You are going to ratify a new contract between God and man. 
satisfy the law that had stood for thousands of years as the all. And you said, now it's a law of grace because I have fulfilled it all. Even to the point of sacrifice, I have covered it all. And we're so thankful for that forgiveness, Lord. Because as the song says, though our, skins, our sins be as scarlet, the scriptures say this too, they'll be washed as white as snow. And so with this emblem, this symbol, and this act of worship, Lord God, we remember what you did selflessly, willingly for us as we partake together in Jesus' name. Would you just just remain in worship? Just I have a word for you. I have a sermon, a message. But there are members of our body, some we don't know of, some we do. There's two in particular that are battling. And I just want you and me and Maggie and everybody else who's working behind the scenes to honor God with one more one more sacrifice of praise before we get into the word. It can be out loud or it can be silently. And you may not have much of a relationship with Dave or Bell, but you're a part of this body. And when one part suffers, another does. The song that we just started learning is a song that says no matter what is going on in our lives as difficult as the circumstances may be he deserves our glory like David said come on soul and bless the Lord So today, Lord, as friends and family, as those near and far who have been baptized into your family, as your sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, heirs and joint heirs, accept our sacrifice of worship today. Let it be as the incense of the temple was burning. Let it be a sweet-smelling savor to you and be honoring to you today. And I pray, Lord, as we empty ourselves of whatever it is that we may be carrying, as the reality of your death and burial and resurrection has just been before us. We ask that you would honor your word and fill us with your spirit as we have worked to empty us of us. And that the word that is spoken today from your scriptures would find fertile soil, freshly tilled, prepped to grow a harvest 
inside of each of us. We thank you for your word, Lord. Its teachings and its principles, but mostly its power. Its reality. And we give you the rest of this service to be yours in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I'm pretty sure that we will continue to do that song next week. You can hear it on Amazon or um, uh, Spotify is another one that lets you find songs. Kids Church is dismissed. Is this on? It is now. Awesome. Danny, the safety officer. You're, I'm sorry. This just this just flashed across my brain. Do you remember the first time Danny did Jingle Jangle? Not Danny, but Danny. It was it was 16, 2016 or 17. So he was five or six, and uh, um, he walked around with the bucket. I can't remember who was sitting two rows in front of Matt, but they didn't put anything in that bucket. And Danny stood there, shake, she jingling the bucket just a little bit until somebody got the hint and passed a little bit of change down for the poor guy that was sitting at the end. And uh, he shook him down pretty good, so... Yeah, sorry, that just reminded me of that. But I wanted to uh, let you know today that the only thing special that I have to give you is this right here. And in spite of all that we may be dealing with, as the word says in Psalm chapter 61, hopefully I already said that. It says, lead me to the rock. Because yesterday all I could, all I could think of were the words, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I can't guarantee I won't get through this without emotion. I hope that's all right. But Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4. I was going to read it from the King James, and I forgot to put it down somewhere. But I'll read it from the English Standard, and you can follow along with the words anyway when I get to my message. That's why it was important. It says, Hear my cry, O God, this is David. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you, and my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock. It's important to know that the King James says, Overwhelmed, but my heart is overwhelmed. We'll be talking about that in a minute. That's an important word. So lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge. He's already had some experience. A strong tower against the enemy. He says, let me dwell in your tent forever, and let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. And the word... Selah or sila, depending on how you pronounce it, is a word that is very ambiguous in its meaning. But what it is intended to do is to be a pause. And usually the poems were set to music. Well, it says to the choir master, so this was a song anyway. And the music was playing, but the people were silent meditating on the thought that was just given. 
That's what Selah means. So when you reread this, or any psalm that says Selah afterwards, remember to stop and think about what you just read. Meditate on it for a moment. So the King James uses a couple of different words here. The word heart is still the same. And that word heart means the inner man, the mind, the will, the heart, the understanding. He says, when my everything inside is overwhelmed. This is a really great word. Overwhelmed in today's understanding means, first word comes to your head. Exhausted. Under. Just under it. Stress. Stress. Like one more drop in the bucket, it's not just going to overflow, but the bottom of the bucket's going to fall out, right? Overwhelmed. And that's a lot of what it means. There are several meanings that are applicable here in this verse. One of them is to envelop oneself. We've talked about that. Cover to the feeble, to be faint, to grow weak. And there was another one, again, in this same context that's really applicable. To turn aside. And I was thinking about walking through a storm, the movies that you see. I guess I would think about Mount Everest or the expedition of the South Pole, the exploration of the South Pole and the North Pole, and how the winds and the storms can get so strong that you have to what? You have to duck. But sometimes, they're so dangerous and so overwhelming, sometimes they had to turn back. Sometimes they had to turn aside. So what he's saying here is sometimes everything that's inside of you, all of the human parts that make you you, can get turned aside from time to time. We know we can get enveloped with it. We know it can make us weary and weak. But he continues to say in verse 2, something about a rock. And he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I always just thought of one image. And it's one of the images that the definitions bring out. And that's a, a boulder, a stone, right? Our sure foundation, as it's called, as he's called. So the storm is coming at us. It is nearly overwhelming us. It is trying to turn us aside. But then there's this big rock, this big stone. And we can go there and find enough shelter to outlast the storm. Not just survive it, not just live through it with a great story, but to stay under that shelter until the storm passes by, and then what? Get back on course. When you're ready to be turned aside or give up is really what that means. 
when you're ready to just collapse under the weight of everything. Find a stone. Find the boulder, the rock that is higher than I. Then there's another one. I'm sorry, Psalm 18, 2. I didn't give her all these verses this week. I'd be happy to share them with you. I may have given her a couple. Uh, 18. I have two. The Lord is, yep, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead and close that out. Psalm 18, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God, says my rock again, in whom I take refuge. We were just talking about that. My shield, the horn of my salvation, and my stronghold, the shield from the storm, shelter from the storm, covering when we feel like we're going under. But there's another image that, that this word rock brings to mind, even out of the very definitions of it. A rocky wall or a cliff brought to mind Moses. God said, what can I do for you, Moses? You've been faithful. You can't go to the promised land. We've already talked about that. He disobeyed, smote the rock twice instead of once. He was judged for it. Water still came out. Israel was still supplied. But Moses had a consequence. Do you remember what Moses asked for? It's in Exodus chapter 33, if you want to write it down and mark it later. Do you remember what Moses asked for? He was a pretty bold to ask for this. Maggie said it, if nobody else does. Huh? Wisdom? That was Solomon, but good guess. Maggie? He said, please let me see your face. God said, you can't see my face. You cannot handle physically my face. You can't handle my glory. You can't handle the power that emanates from me. He said, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, there is a place, Exodus chapter 33, verses 21 through 22. There's a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And in this instance, he's talking about a cliff. Because while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, a cutout, a hollow space in the stone. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And all you will be able to handle is looking at my coattails. And that's exactly what God did. God put Moses on the side of a cliff, a rocky wall. And he was protected. You guys think I'm crazy when I stand up here and that the scripture can't possibly tie all this together and still be accurate and still be rightly divided. But this is what God does. When we tell him what we need, when we're honest with him about where we're at, which is what, I used to do it. You, you've done it before. Come to church all smiles. Come to church like there's not a care in the world. Fake it till you make it. You ever heard that? It was the worst advice ever. Now, I'm not saying do what Elijah did and wallow around in self-pity, wishing that you had never been born. That's called depression. But to say, God, my heart is overwhelmed. I need some protection from the rock. Maybe you look up and maybe there's a boulder to hide under for just a little bit, and you can remember some of the scriptures, or the Holy Spirit will come and touch you and strengthen you. Like the angels strengthened Jesus while he was praying in the garden. Maybe sometimes it will be God putting you on the side of a cliff where nobody or any, nothing else can get to you and shielding you from everything that's keeping you where you're at. Or the storm that blew up out of nowhere. Anybody ever have one of those? And then there's one more about the rock. 
rocky wall, a boulder, large stone, or the cliff. And this is what I always thought of, but not like this. I always thought of that rock, that plateau that was above everything. There wasn't water deep enough that could cover it. It was above the, the winds of the storm. It was above the rains of the storm. That was the image I always had in my head. But what he's saying is, in part, it's a cliff. He says, lead me to the rock. Show me the cliff. Because I have a choice. We have a choice when this storm comes. We have a choice when we're nearly overwhelmed. When we're like Peter and, you know, it's, it's, it's starting to get chin deep. My nose is going to cover. I can't handle anymore. Jesus, save me. Because I got out of the boat and I don't even know why. Lead me to the rock. But how do you get to the high place? You climb. I pour out my praises. I give you my worship because you deserve it. That's climbing. And it's hard. I said this psalm before we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. I referenced David where he said, come on, soul, bless the Lord. He's climbing. He's trying. It's like Joseph having all these bad things happen to him, but still remaining faithful in the service of the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't kneel, if you don't bow, you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. Then God will protect us. They were climbing. Fiery furnace. Sorry. Daniel, lion's den. Same thing. Pray and bow. No. Okay, lion's den. Okay, I got some new friends. Climbing. Climbing. You might be crying the whole way. Your hands might get bloody. Your legs might get weak. But climb. Climb to that cliff. Climb above the storm. The storm is going on. But the cliff will save you. And sometimes it's up to us to climb. Some decide to, some decide not to, some climb faster than others. I haven't been climbing very quickly this week, but we're trying. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Second Samuel chapter 27. I have a, a lot of scripture to read, but I, I promise this is, this is going around pretty quick. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 47 through 49. The Lord lives, and guess what he says? Blessed be my rock, and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and brought down peoples under me. Most important verse. Who brought me out from my enemies. And you exalted me above all who rose against me. You delivered me from men of violence. Obviously, this is David talking about a great victory. But take the application across a little bit. You brought me out from my enemies. Sometimes our enemy is a storm. You exalted me above those who rose against me. The storm. You delivered me from the violence that wanted to turn me aside. Because we decided to climb and find that cliff.
very quickly, verses 3 and 4 use two words, shelter and covert. Not covert in the King James, it's covert. And those words mean a covering, a shelter, okay? But this is great. This is the whole thing right here, a hiding place. Secrecy, a secret place that God has provided just for you. When you go into that cleft, it's not like David with a hundred men of debt, distress, and discontent. That is a secret place that God has made for you to wait and recover. And maybe you have to get back into the storm, but maybe the storm has already subsided. But instead of wallowing in the self-pity where I have mentioned Elijah already, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I might as well go eat worms. He went into the wilderness to lay down and die. That's all he wanted to do. But God wouldn't let him because the birds, you know how much birds really like to share? Have you seen hummingbirds and feeders? Have you ever watched them? They're very territorial, aren't they? And they'll fight between, they'll go and they'll drink for two seconds and somebody will come and chase them away and they'll go to the other one and they'll go back and forth and they spend more time and energy fighting, but that's a whole other sermon. But it's your secret place. It's your shelter all by yourself. There's nobody fighting for that territory because you know why? God has a cleft with your name on it. Not our name. It's not a duplex. It's not adjoining rooms necessarily. It's your place with him. And he's made it already. Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the shadow or shelter, ESV says, of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of of the Almighty. Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, jumping into the New Testament, just so you know, everything all connects. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28, verses, uh, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, Jesus said something very important that we forget, especially in times of storm and being overwhelmed. He said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy, and I will give you rest, shelter, covering, protection. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find, there's that word again, rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Miss Ardeth, will you come? Because I have one more set of scriptures to share with you. And I need to take a look because one page says one thing and one page says another. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure which one's right. They both say Luke chapter 12, so that's a safe bet. Luke chapter 12. couple more, 9, 10, 11, 12. Come on, Andy. Let's see. I think it's this one. Yes, Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 31. You can go ahead and start playing when you're ready. And if you are reading along with me, that's fine. But if not, I would just encourage you not to listen to my words, but listen to the words of Jesus himself. So if you're inclined to, go ahead and close your eyes and 
listen to something that Jesus said, actually said on this earth. He said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. They have no storehouses or barns, and yet God feeds them. How much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, verse 25, by being anxious can add a single hour to your lifespan? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil or spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? A little rebuke thrown in there. And do not seek what you are to eat or drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world will seek after, will seek after these things, and your fathers know that your father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added unto you. Jesus knows your storm. And you can keep your eyes closed if you would. Jesus knows your storm. And while our body as a church body, as part of the body of Christ, is going through a storm together, praying and battling for our friends, I know that there may be storms in your life right now. And as always, Scripture brings us to a point of decision where we can be like the world and give in to the storm and turn aside from our direction or be overwhelmed and overcome with it and lie down just hoping to die. Or we can find the rock that is higher than the storm. We can find the shelter of the shadow of his wings. We can seek out our rock, the author and the finish of our, of our faith, Jesus Christ, and bring our weary and heavy laden burdens, our wet clothes, our frozen gloves, and he will give us rest and shelter, and comfort. The only thing that we can do at the moment in the storm, well, the first thing we have to do is recognize it And then, rise above it. Get some rest and head back in the direction you are going in. I know it's so easy to say, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I'm not trying to be flippant with the scriptures, but it's so easy to say. And you probably know more of them than you think. But it's another thing to do it. It's a harder thing to climb. It's a harder thing to, to walk over to that boulder and to take shelter for a few minutes. The storms are real. We know that. The storms are hard and 
and, and terrible and fierce. But I know somebody who is jealous for his children. I know somebody that asked his only son to lay down his life, and that son did that. And today that son is seated at the right hand of his father because of his great love and his great obedience. He has been exalted. And he is the master of every storm. The only thing I can encourage you to do today is make the decision to climb. To make the decision to run to the rock, to the boulder. To go to him who will give you rest. Today, Lord, in this place, from wherever we may be watching or listening, we acknowledge your ability, your desire to keep us safe when we feel like we're going to die to give us shelter when the storm is about to turn us aside or overwhelm us and take us down forever. We acknowledge that power. We acknowledge that ability. And we acknowledge the willingness that you have to extend it to all. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. So by your Holy Spirit, encourage each of us today to duck down behind the boulder, to climb to the cleft of the rock, or to get to that cliff above the storm and get re-energized and, and, and get ready to go back on that course again. Holy Spirit, move in our hearts today. that we would not stop, turn aside, or give up, but that we would continue the course that you have set us on individually and as a group. Your dedication has not waned. Your love never fails. Your mercies they are new every morning. You are the friend that is closer than any brother. And you will never leave us or forsake us. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit and the work of Jesus Christ that you all who are listening, myself included, that we would let those words burn in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this good day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and love toward us. And we look to you, no matter what the answers are, no matter what the outcomes are, we look to you for our shelter and our rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do, do you happen to have a different song than Trust and Obey? Can you Okay, that's all right. It's still a good word. Trust and obey. Let's sing that one out. Amen.